Hello everyone, this is Bruce Hansen with Sunbelt Marketing and today we're going to be talking about Pietro Fiorentini gas regulators. Specifically the standard governor standard model. There are other devices that Pietro Fiorentini has but today we're just going to focus on the governor standard model. So just a quick breeze through of how gas moves through the Pietro Fiorentini. Uh, we have First, our inlet side here, and then if we flip it over, we have our outlet side there. So gas comes through the inlet side. You can see my pinky moving behind the unit there. Fills up that chamber, and it's going to be reacting with the diaphragm and the spring and this yellow part, which is the balancing piston. All three of those are going to work in tandem to create an equilibrium from incoming gas pressure to the desired outgoing gas pressure. Now, just like most regulators, you can adjust that pressure by removing the green cap and tightening or loosening that spring that's going to change the resistance and change the equilibrium. You see a brass piece at the top that's going to be an external vent limiter. Taking a closer look at the unit, if you need to open this unit, you would need a security bit. So once we take off all the screws on the bottom side of the governor here, you'll see that the inlet side of the governor is protected with a filter. Sometimes in the gas lines, there's debris, there's shavings, there's rust. This filter will protect the diaphragm from any unwanted materials moving through the gas line. Also, each unit comes with test ports that you can connect a anemometer to. They are pre-threaded, but they are not pre-drilled. You'll have to take an eighth inch drill bit to them. This is just going to explain how the Pietro Fiorentini uses a balanced valve design with a piston, while other regulators like the Census will use a lever balancing design. So as you can see, the yellow piece is the piston, and when we take apart the Census, you can see that that has a lever balance. So a little bit about the specifications on the PF regulators. The line sizes range from half inch all the way up to four inch. They include an integral vent limiter as well as an external vent limiter, and they are CSA rated uh, for 2 PSI, but they can go all the way up to 7.25 PSI. They have a positive 100% bubble tight lockup as well as a 500 to 1 turn down ratio, and the filter is included on all the models on the inlet side. They have a wide range of outlet springs. These are very high performance regulators. One of the ways PF achieved this high level of performance is the fact that they used a balanced valve design. The advantages of a balanced valve design versus an unbalanced valve design. In an unbalanced valve, by increasing the inlet pressure, there's a shift in the set point of the outlet pressure, and the difference or variation between the minimum and maximum of the inlet pressure change, the greater this potential deviation is downstream and potentially a greater impact downstream. A balanced valve design, we actually use the inlet pressure to operate the regulator. The balanced valve is designed so the balancing piston creates the same and opposite force created by the inlet pressure. Since these forces are equal, the two forces neutralize each other under all inlet pressure conditions. When increasing the inlet pressure, there is a minimal negligible shift on the set point. The balancing system makes the regulator insensitive to inlet pressure variation, allowing the spring to control the regulator's outlet pressure, providing a smooth and consistent gas flow downstream. Higher capacities, the governor has no single unit capacity limitations, with a greater accuracy in response to inlet and outlet pressure variations and flow rate variations. A 500 to 1 turn down ratio, the best in the industry. PF uses a lighter spring for better outlet pressure control, and you can install these regulators in multi position, either horizontally or vertically. So now I'd like to talk about the integral vent limiter as well as the external vent limiter. If we take a look at a cross section of this unit, there is a worker diaphragm and there is a safety diaphragm. The integral vent limiter is actually part of the safety diaphragm through a pinhole. I'll show you that here in just a second. So here we have our balanced shutter and assembly, which includes the piston, and we've got our worker diaphragm. 
and we've got our safety diaphragm which has a small pin hole that pin hole is actually the safety vent hole which is part of the integral vent limiter and then there's a little flap on the piston that's part of the balanced shutter diaphragm here's the balanced shutter diaphragm a little closer look here's a little closer look at the pin hole which is part of the integral vent limiter and here's how all of these diaphragms fit together the um, balanced shutter and yellow piston connect first to the worker diaphragm that worker diaphragm is protected by a small plate and then we connect the safety diaphragm which has the pin hole so if that worker diaphragm ruptures the safety diaphragm becomes an integral vent limiter and gas proceeds onto the external vent limiter which is actually that brass plug that has a ball check in it which will only allow a certain amount of gas into the outside atmosphere if the unit was installed outside we wouldn't need that brass piece we just use this green cap that allows gas to vent into the outside atmosphere if the unit is installed vertically we have to use a adapter because the brass vent limiter is a gravity fed ball check valve so when you turn it horizontally you have to have a different gravity fed ball check valve but if you have any questions don't hesitate to call us at Sunbelt we'll be happy to help you with any of your regulator needs